Bitcoin maxis, Ethereum maxis are all buzzing about the SEC's appeal of the Ripple case. But, but it's nothing like they think. You got it. We're going to go over that. I know it was big on crypto Twitter yesterday about the appeal that the SEC threw together at the last minute, you know, after the judge had come out and gave her information. I'm, I'll go over it here in a little bit, so I don't want to get too, too deep in it, but I have that. I also have the reaction from Stuart Alderati. Uh, he is the lead chief counsel at Ripple and what he says about it. And I also have the Utes NFT collection. What's happening with the Utes NFT collection? Guys, you're traveling all over the world. You keep hopping from one one protocol, the next, it's a complete mess. We're going to go over that all today on OG Crypto and NFTs. Welcome, everyone. My name is Troy, and every day we go over the latest news in cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, and yes, of course, NFTs. So before we jump into it, do me a favor, hit that like button. I want to get that like. I want to get this, this whole channel up and running. I'm going to give you the best five to 10 minutes in crypto, and it's going to be the most honest crypto. It's not going to be, oh, Bitcoin, rah, rah, e Ethereum, rah, rah. It's all you get from a lot of other influencers. And then you get the shit coins that they tell you about that they're dumped, that they, they want you to buy and they dump on you. And that's happened over and over and over in our industry. So, all right, so let's jump right into it. This is SEC seeks appeal uh, excuse me, SEC seeks to appeal ruling that Ripple XRP isn't a security. <laughs> Does anyone read the court paperwork? Because that could be furthest from what the SEC is appealing from. Okay, it's interlocutory appeal, which means let's go back this up. So we had this this you know, judgment ruling forever going on. And then on July 13th, the judge comes out and says, boom, here's my judgment. And she she actually split the baby. That's the term it's called. So any of Ripple's sales to in, investors, early investors, okay, over marketing their prop, their their coin XRP, not their coin, the coin XRP, about a hundred of pamphlets they put out, and, and about seven hundred million dollars worth of XRP. Those she said was a security offering and sell. Okay, then she said the actual token itself, XRP is not ever considered a security. It's the way it's sold, not the, not the actual token itself. So she said, now the next set of sales that Ripple had with this token XRP was to exchanges. And the exchanges turned around and they sold it to people uh, who did, they didn't have direct connection to. They weren't talking to over the phone. They weren't sales pitching them. Whoever people bought XRP on the exchanges for, whether it be for NFTs, for air flights, for whatever, those weren't sales of securities. So what did, what did the SEC appeal? Well, they appealed the sale, the Ripple sales to the exchanges. They, they're not appealing whether XRP is a security or not. So all the FUD that's out there that people don't want to read any of the, the court rulings, they don't want to go fi figure it out. They just want to throw something together because that's what pe that's what the media does today. If it's negative, it sells. If it's positive, we want nothing to do with it. So let's jump over here to Twitter to Stuart Alderati, and this is what he says. The SEC does not have the right to appeal just yet which is why they're asking for permission to file an interlocutory appeal. Ripple will file its response to the court next week. Stay tuned. So they went up and they said, judge, hey, judge, we, wanted, we want to appeal this piece of your judgment. And we'll hold on. The judge says, we'll hold on. Okay. It's step by step. We went, we went through, we did all the, the motions. We did all of the evidence. Then I made my summary judgment. And then from summary judgment, it goes to court, okay? For anything I didn't want to judge on, it'll go to a courtroom and it'll be a jury trial, right? Which then she set up for the second quarter of 2024. Then they have the right after that jury trial and after they finish all the negotiations of that, 
Then after that, that's when the SEC has the right to appeal sometime in third or fourth quarter of 2024. Okay. So now you're asking, well, how did they put the appeal out today? Well, because they have to have, it's like, I can put an appeal out at any time, but I have to have a number of things happen for it to get approved, you know, preemptively. Number one, I got to have Ripple say it's okay to do it, right? So that's where Stuart Aldrani saying, ha ha, nay, stay tuned, right? And then you have to have the judge say, well, you know, I was just kidding. I, I, you know, I, you know, after nine months of deliberating in my head and putting it down on paper, everything I wrote was just full of crap. So you have to have the judge actually say that she's okay with them taking it up to the second, the second circuit before we even get to trial, right? I, the, the chance of those two things are happening are just ridiculously low, if not ever going to happen. So we'll get, so next week, Ripple's going to come back and say, hey, here's what we feel about it. And you got to think that the tone is Stu, is Stu Alderati. And then, of course, Brad Gardinghouse is like, F-U-B, because they're done with it. They're done with the, the SEC making all these accusations that were now shown as untrue. They're delaying the process to, to hold back, you know, the investors, the company. They didn't want them. They want nothing. You know, they didn't want them to go forward here in the United States. They locked Ripple down. Now Ripple is in the cat seat. They are the ones that are in control. And, and I don't think they're going to do anything but stick out both middle fingers and tell them to shove it up there. Beep. All right. Let's keep moving on here. If you like what you're hearing, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Really helps. It really helps me out. So let's go. This is from Blockworks. And this is very something interesting that came out yesterday. Uh, Coinbase came out and said, hey, we're seeing an enormous amount of activity on our exchange in the state of New York. Very interesting. It says crypto adoption rapidly gaining traction in New York. Coinbase says one fifth of New Yorkers own crypto, according to Coinbase report. Now, that's pretty huge. Now, the question is, is as people using real addresses, <laughs> OK, because when you KYC, yes, you have to have some type of document that shows that you know where you live who you are you have to identify yourself but you know there's just, there's it's it's so easy to manipulate some of these documents and to say i live in new york or i live you know in in la well who the hell wants to live in la or new york <laughs> either way but with that being said this is what we're seeing out there it's very encouraging that it's becoming more of a voter's uh, rights that people are talking about for the next election. So we're going to find out, uh, you know, as more and more people jump into crypto and the blue team has been pretty anti-crypto and, and right below you in Boston is Elizabeth Warren, who has an anti-crypto army that she's trying to assemble, but got laughed off at, at in Congress. But you just see that there is now people are picking sides and it's going to be an election uh, issue. All right, next, SEC to announce major uh, Bitcoin ETF decision tomorrow. Very, very interesting. We expect it to be blown off or put off. Uh, the six months that they had a chance to look this over, the ETF was a very famous uh, person. It's ARK, ARK, Kathy Woods from ARK, 21 shares Bitcoin ETF. The decision is supposed to be tomorrow, uh, actually on Sunday, but because that's a holiday, they think they're going to move it up. Well, uh, the article reads that, hey, it looks like it'll probably be announced sometime after the close of business tomorrow or Monday. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are just going to they're, they're really anxious on what's going to happen here, because if they say something negative, the SEC does on this topic. Well, what are they going to say to other companies such as BlackRock and Fidelity? So. I don't know, Valkyrie, it's all these that are out there that have, that have actually put out their yeah, you know, applications for ETFs. And those won't even be decided till the end of December, if not the first quarter of next year. So with that being said, all eyes are on this decision and this, this judgment, if I want to call it, will there happen tomorrow or on Monday? All right, let's jump right into NFTs. This is from Coindesk. Utes, we had report on the Utes about a month ago. They were red hot, going, exploding. And it's just turned into a complete mess ever since. They were on Solana. They hated Solana. 
join the club. I mean, everyone doesn't like when Solana goes down. Uh, it's it's just a VC cesspool in my eyes. You know, all the VCs are all in it. That means that retail is getting screwed. Uh, and so the Utes NFT collection is migrating to Ethereum after accepting a $3 million grant from Polygon. Don't, I don't really understand it. I get that demigods, uh, this is the same, the same uh, artists and the same company that owns demigods. Demigods went from, uh, went from Polygon onto Ethereum and now they're dragging their little brother, the Utes, right onto, from Polygon on, onto Ethereum. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You know, Ethereum, again, is just not a good, reliable, you know, uh, it's not good or reliable, okay? I mean, who wants to turn around and spend $20 on it on a, on a NFT just to have gas fees? It makes no sense. I don't understand what they're doing. Go to Hedera. Go to Algorand, go to, to XRP, go somewhere else, man. What are you doing? This is just a, oh, check out Ethereum. But guess what? Ethereum's NFTs have just completely catered. I mean, all the blue chips are just falling completely apart. And you're going to bring on your, your price possession collection onto this garbage network? Come on. That's, I, don't, I just don't get it. It's not smart business. You had a $3 million grant. I have a feeling that Polygon had little restrictions on it that you didn't want to follow. And Polygon's only pennies. You, you think about this, it's pennies to transact on Polygon. It's dollars and tens of dollars on Ethereum. Again, doesn't make sense. We're gonna see it. We're gonna see this collection wilt like they all wilted on Ethereum itself. Well guys, thank you very much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. I know that uh, every day you wake up and there's something new happening in crypto, it's something new and exciting, whether it be adoption, whether it be appeals, whether, I mean, it, it has a little of everything crypto does. If you if you like, you can also see me on Twitter. I, we're OG Crypto on Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. You guys take care and I will see you tomorrow.